Knox's gaze had veered to the jag. He stepped closer to skim his fingers over the edge of the roof. This is a nice find here. How much you sell these for? <clears throat> Knox. The Skullbreaker's leader jerked his attention back to the more important matter at hand. I made a mental note of his car preferences in case I was ever in a position to pick one up. You know, <laughs> as a Christmas present or something. You're with the Skeleton Corps? Hey, you're those dickhead punks who've been rampaging all over town. Haven't you gotten the message yet? There's no place for you here, and no one cares about your feelings about some pricks who died a gazillion years ago. Twenty-one. It seems like you're the ones who haven't gotten the message. And you'd better be worried about your own feelings. Because it's not going to feel good when we've stomped you into little pieces. The core guy didn't even bother to reply. He made some gesture I barely caught, and the three guys launched themselves at us like one being. Ah! They should have the advantage. There were only three of them, but they were armed. One guy with a very large wrench, and the other two with guns they'd whipped out as they came at us. The Skullbreakers had shown up apparently empty-handed, although I knew they had their own pistols tucked away in easy reach. The thing was, these jerks clearly hadn't gotten the news about just how much my men could do with their empty hands. Knox swung his fists in quick succession, the burst of energy that shot from them extending his reach. He smacked the gun from one guy's grasp and then clocked him in the jaw hard enough to send him reeling into a backflip that would have impressed most Olympic judges before he was even close enough for Knox to touch. Kai ducked and jabbed the other gunman in the stomach. Stop your colleagues from attacking us. That guy jerked around toward the wrench man like he was a puppet on strings. Before he had to tackle the wrench, Jet and Ruin double-teamed the guy. <laughs> Jet, his supernatural talent for altering appearances not being particularly helpful in a fight, simply kicked the guy's legs out from under him, sending him staggering right into Ruin's fist. His mouth stretched into a fierce grin. Ruin smacked the guy's hand up to sock him with his own wrench for good measure. The rhythm of the smacks, thuds, and groans filled my ears, and it occurred to me with a distant sort of uneasiness that I wasn't particularly shocked or horrified by any of the violence anymore. These were my men, dealing out justice the way they knew how, and I was okay with that too. 